Hey everyone, welcome to this new video with the Photoroom engineering team. I'm Vincent, I'm an iOS engineer at Photoroom. Hey, I'm Florian and I'm a rendering engineer at Photoroom. If you don't know what Photoroom is, it's an app to easily create professional images for e-commerce and entrepreneurs, and you can actually download it for free with a link in the description. And for this first video, we want to share with you a pretty nice trick that we came up with that is about animations on iOS. But before we start talking about that, maybe Frank, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at Photoroom? I'm in charge of an image rendering pipeline. So what that means is basically every time you're in the edit view of Photoroom and you're moving stuff around or you're applying an effect such as contrast, brightness, basically this is interacting with my work. And this is something that really has to look smooth and nice for the user. And so animations are super important in your work. Exactly. So before we talk about this nice trick that we came up with, can we maybe start by doing a little recap about what is animation and uh, how do they work by default on iOS? Yeah, I think most iOS engineers would be familiar with uh, UIView.animate uh, function. And so this is the way UIKit uses to animate interface changes, basically. Uh, so it's really easy to, to work with, but the issue with those types of things is that it only works for properties that are animatable in UIKit. So it works for the alt file, it works for the transform those views, but you can't go ahead and create yourself a custom property that would work with UIKit. View .animate. Yeah, because what's really important to keep in mind is that animatable properties, they're implemented by Apple, but Apple doesn't provide a mechanism for a random property that you define to opt in into this mechanism. We could say it's kind of like a private API. Exactly. There's no documentation on how there's the UIView.animate code translates into core animation uh, animations. And so the issue you had to solve is that you had an object that was completely removed from the UI view hierarchy, but still your views were depending on that object for their layout code. And so you wanted to have a mechanism where when you updated a property on that object, it would still trigger a nice animation in a seamless way like uh, native animatable properties do. Exactly. So as you can guess, we do a lot of on, on drawing because, well, this is a photo editing app. But yeah, we had this object that was completely unrelated from UI view uh, that was controlling some part of a rendering uh, from which I really wanted to have a convenience of something like UI view .animate to work with. So this is how I came up with a custom property animator that we are going to be talking about. But before we talk about this custom property animator, maybe we should start by doing a small recap about what it means for property to be animatable and basically what happens when we set a new value to an animatable property inside a function like uiView.animate. So basically what's going to happen is that the system will automatically for you uh, create all the mechanism necessary for the value of this uh, property to be interpolated in between the start and the end value at regular intervals. And by default, uh, using uh, CA animation, the system will also trigger a redraw of a layer so that this new property that you're using to control your draw code gets used regularly while it's being interpolated. If you want to implement your own custom animatable property, you need to figure out the exact step that iOS puts in place to animate a property and then replicate them somehow inside your own code. Exactly. You need to understand how UIView.animate does its work and you need to do the same thing. So let's take a look at uh, how you solve this issue. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to move over to the code over here. Basically, the idea is to add a custom UI view into the view hierarchy on which we are going to be able to animate properties. So in this example, it's a custom property animator view, which is a private class in my, uh, in my helper, who defines a single layer, which is this custom property animator layer, which we're going to talk about in a second. And on this view, we have a single property, which is value that basically has a getter and a setter that differ to the layer. So let's talk about the layer. The layer has the same value as you just saw in the UI view. And the trick with that is that it's tagged with the NS manage, which means that we are letting the Objective-C runtime uh, do some magic on it. I'll explain a bit later what that means exactly. The core of the layer itself is those three functions that we see over here. Uh, whose basically job are to intercept the animation context that UIView.animate sets up for us and replicate it for the custom value that we want to do. This function action for key is an overridden from a CL layer. It's a function that every CL layer in iOS has. And its job is to set up what action 
we want to accomplish for a certain key on the layer. So on, uh, in our example, the key that we're interested in is the value key. Basically uh, return the animation that should be used to control how this uh, key gets interpolated over time. So as you can see, the very first thing that I do in the function is to uh, check that we are talking about the custom key. So the key for the value that we uh, created. Otherwise just defer to the natural implementation on iOS. And the second trick is over here is to get the current animation context, which is to say the current properties of the animation that the iOS uh, UIView.animate has set up for us. This is not public API. This is not something that uh, iOS has documented on how they work with. But what we can see is that for the background color key, which is a property that every CA layer has, the action for the background color key is always a CA animation in the context of a animation currently going on. So what that means exactly is that if you are in a UIView.animate block, the action for the background color will be a CA animation. It's actually a CA basic animation. But if you're outside of this block, then this action becomes nil. And so you can see that I created a getter here for a current animation context that does the trick that I just talked about. And this is what we get in here. So in case we're not in a UIView.animate block, this function here we return nil and we will not animate the changes for our custom property. And in case we are, then we just get the uh, context from the background color property and copy its most important attributes. We're not going to copy the two value, obviously, because that wouldn't make sense in our case. But we're going to copy the begin time, the duration, the fact that it should auto reverse or not, the fact that it should repeat or not. And we are also going to copy the timing function and the delegate. This is very important because that means that whatever argument you're going to see as an easing curve in your UIView.animate block is going to get copied over. And it also means that if you were to add a completion block to your UIView.animate call, it will also port over because of the delegate property that we propagate. So with the view, you kind of like set a hook inside the view hierarchy, which uh, lets you be notified whenever someone has tried to animate the property in a method like UIView.animate. Mm -hmm. And then with the layer, you get how that animation was set up. You get the animation through that current animation context, and you select the property that interests you. You replicate them into your own custom animation that you then start. That's exactly right. That's pretty nice. So you can see on the root of the object, Whenever we create it, so we set an initial value for a property and uh, optional update handler, which will be called whenever we need to update uh, whatever is using our property. What I'm doing is just creating the view as a, a custom property animator view, so which embeds the layer that we just talked about. I set it way far off in the distance, so basically uh, x and y minus infinity and width and height one. Uh, you have to have it in the view hierarchy. It cannot be empty and it cannot be not added to hierarchy, but it doesn't have to be visible. You can set it up way far out in the distance and it will not mess up with anything that you're doing UI-wise, yeah. but it will still get the updates of the layer mechanism. And when I look at your code, I'm thinking that maybe a tricky pitfall would be to try and set a frame of zero. Exactly. You have to have a non-empty frame because whenever you add something with a frame zero, I think it gets removed from the view hierarchy at some point. And so the last thing that we didn't talk about is the update handler and the mechanism by which it's called. It's really easy, actually. It's just on your UI view on the custom property animator view, I override the layer withdraw uh, method. In case the layer that we need to be drawn is the animator layer that we created earlier, then I just dispatch on the main queue uh, the update handler for the property. So what that means is that because there was a change in the interpolated value, the layer will have to be drawn again, and this is done by iOS, but I get a notification that the layer will be drawn. And so I have to, or I can at least, notify whatever code is creating this animator handler that there's an update available. If you want to use it to redraw something or to do whatever else, you can use it. Yeah, so basically you're going to use it to tell your view hierarchy you need to redraw because otherwise it wouldn't be aware of it. Because as we said, the goal is to animate properties that are on objects 
not related to view hierarchy, so like uh, basic NS objects, for instance. Or even just a uniform in a shader code somewhere. Using this class, you can animate pretty much every property that you want. It doesn't have to be correlated to anything UI view related. In Photoroom, whenever you reorder the layers on your composition, there is this animation where the camera rotates away from the main subject and zooms back a little. I use this to animate uh, the properties that uh, control this movement of a camera on the main scene. And in this example, we showcased a CG float. So the value uh, property that we've been animating is this CG float over here. But you could do exactly the same thing to animate a CG rect or a CG affine transform if you want. Uh, it's very flexible. All right, so thank you, Fayan, for showing us this pretty nice week. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to experiment with this code, there is a link to a gist in the description. And if you want to see more videos with the Photoroom team, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.